headed. That's already been prearranged up here. So nerve root C8 can go like over here, down here, around that, and get back up to the nerve that it needs to go to because that's the highways and freeways that it can get to. Does that make sense? It doesn't necessarily. It's not like things have to be bundled. T1 does not need to go across to there. T8 you know, does not need to go across to there. It can go anywhere. Okay? So I'll draw it pretty this time. Okay, draw one line across the top, one line across the bottom. All right? Another Sorry. line that stops. You're fine. Give myself plenty of room there. Okay? I draw an X on the top, a Y on the bottom. That goes out. A little stick figure. Radial. Excellent. You have to make the M. You guys have heard of the M? You've got to make the M. Muscular cutaneous. It's median. Ulnar. Okay? Then I did five, six, seven, eight, one. So C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. With me so far? Yeah. Yeah. Now, from this stupid little chart, I can <laughs> ask you what happens if I cut that. So if I do that, that's, this is roots, trunks, divisions, cords, nerves, right? So if I cut that somehow, like, say, a baby who gets delivered, you put their foot down there and you pull on the baby's arm and get the baby out, but you tear that nerve, okay? It's Herb's palsy. When you do get that, what nerves do you not affect? Well, this nerve can go all the way down here, so we know the ulnar nerve is affected, right? It can also go up here, so the radial and the axillary nerves are affected, and this goes all the way down here and can go out to the median nerve. But you can't get to the muscular cutaneous nerve from here. So you see what I mean by being a trace question? The only nerve not affected by tearing that uh, division apart is muscular cutaneous. That's what the diagram is good Couldn't for. you still go to the muscle? Not backwards. That goes down, can't go back up this way. Oh. If you guys, when you do your M, it'll actually physically look a little more like this, where this goes down, and those two become one. Okay? So you can, you can only keep going one way. You can't go that way. Go backwards. Okay, which how I find out, like if I cut this one up here, same thing. I cut that, and suddenly the muscular cutaneous is affected, the median nerve is affected, both the radial and the axillary, but not the ulnar. You see that? I cannot get to the ulnar nerve from here. Okay, I can get down here, seven gets up to the muscular cutaneous, but this one. So this is just a little way to trace things and figure them out. You guys with me so far? Mm -hmm. Sure, you just cut the whole thing off. <laughs> Well, no, and that's the reason why it's important, because usually you can't get them all. The only place you can get them all is to break your neck there. That's really it. So when people come in and go, I was just in a car wreck and I cannot use my right arm. Well, you didn't rip your arm off, because it's still attached there, <laughs> and you would have had to break your neck. And so that's when you say you can't move your arm, I'm checking your neck. Okay? Because that's the only place you could get all of them. Okay? You didn't rip all of them off the side of your neck. So you had to fracture your neck up above, or there's something else wrong. I've had girls come in with a hematoma to the side of their chest where they sit too close to the steering wheel, they get hit from behind, they hit somebody else, that sets off their, their um, airbag, and the airbag punches them in the chest so hard, it's only designed to save your life, not anything else. And they get a hematoma there. Hematoma is spreading blood, that heme blood is an irritant to everything except blood vessels. That blood, because there's an artery running through here, spreads and irritates all the nerves, they don't work anymore. Okay, so. The reason that I stopped this one here, the radial and the axillary nerve, is because this is where the axillary artery tucks in and is now surrounded by the brachial plexus. So if you want to see the radial and the axillary nerve, you have to actually look behind the axillary artery. Okay? Otherwise, the M is going to be on top of the axillary artery, then the axillary artery, then the radial axillary nerve. But you really need to think of it in three dimensions. It's really the axillary artery with them surrounding it. Does that make sense? So once you get good at doing this, then you start adding details. You draw this, I screwed that up. Redraw it, now it looks good. Once you keep drawing it and it looks good all the time, then you start adding things like, well, up here is the dorsal scapular nerve. Coming off here is the suprascapular nerve. You're not going to see any of that. That's the neck day section. That's all happening way up here. Okay, so don't worry about that, but you need to know it for the, that kind of for the testing. Coming off here are the medial and lateral pectoral nerves. Is this medial or is this medial? Anatomical position. That's medial. This is medial, that's lateral. So this is the medial pectoral nerve and this is the lateral pectoral nerve. But both of those pectoral nerves run the pectoralis major, right? Mm -hmm. 
So those two nerves have to be coordinated together because it's two nerves running one muscle. So they're connected. And that's why you see that little loop on the, on the, uh, the diagram, that those two nerves are connected to each other. So the medial pectoral nerve, lateral pectoral nerve have to be connected to each other. They're named after the cord they come off of, because this is the level of the cord. They're named after the cord they come off, posterior cord, medial cord, sorry, medial cord, lateral cord, okay? Then coming off here, one, two, three. Upper, middle, and lower subscapular nerves. The middle subscapular nerve happens to be thoracodorsal. Okay, but the upper, middle, and lower subscapular nerves. Then off here, the medial brachial cutaneous. And after that, the medial antebrachial cutaneous. Okay? And so now I'm adding all this extra stuff on. Um, I can add on another one here. Coming off five, running all the way down the body, adding two by six and by seven is long thoracic. And so as you get better at doing the diagram, you can add on all these little nerves. Okay? Dorsal scapula, super scapula. But that's it. That's all of them. That's everything in the brachial plexus. You can do that in just a couple of minutes. You try that five, six, seven times. You'll be able to draw all the nerves. And then when you walk over and you look at the brachial plexus, you'll know that when I'm looking for the radial and axillary nerves, I have to look behind the, the, the axillary artery to see them. And at the level of the cords, that's where I'm going to see these upper, middle, and lower subscapular nerves come off. That's why I walk up and I can just find the medial pectoral nerve because I know to look in the cord, right, the medial cord that the ulnar nerve comes off of, and I can look right at the medial pectoral nerve coming off because I know where to look. And this will help you find yourself in the brachial plexus. Any questions about that? I'll just leave that one up there because that's so you guys can copy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.